a reading from Matthew's 10th chapter. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Grace to you and peace in the name of the God who loves us all. My name is Adam Snook. I serve as an assistant to the bishop in the Eastern Synod of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, where my primary roles are in the areas of mission, communication, and congregational support. I count it as a true privilege to participate once again in this year's ELCIC Summer Sermon Series. It really is a joy for us to have this opportunity to worship together. If you're hearing this sermon on July 2nd, then you're doing so as delegates conclude the business of Assembly 2023, a joint gathering of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the Anglican Church of Canada held over the past four days in Calgary. On behalf of our delegates and church leaders in attendance, I want to thank you for your prayers as they've accompanied those who've gathered for this important event in the life of our church and our full communion relationship. We are grateful for your prayerful accompaniment through these days. The 10th chapter of Matthew's Gospel is devoted almost entirely to the topic of discipleship. It's in these verses that Jesus commissions, empowers, and then sends the 12 disciples out to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. It's also in these verses that Jesus offers warnings about coming persecutions, speaks about fear, wades into the topic of division on account of the gospel, and even calls the disciples to take up their cross and to follow after. Wow. Imagine what the modern-day job description for such a role would look like. Wanted, a disciple, must be able to do the seemingly impossible, sustain attacks and rumors, withstand threats of violence, speak truths that are sure to be poorly received, and be willing to lose their life. It's a tall order. Needless to say that I doubt the position of disciple would end up trending on LinkedIn or Indeed. Sadly, I think our approach to Matthew's 10th chapter often mirrors the response we would have to such a job description as the one I've just described. Hearing these verses as they talk about such daunting and often foreign concepts may leave modern-day disciples, may leave you and me, feeling overwhelmed, uninspired, and even reluctant to take up that same cross which Jesus has called us to carry. And after all, no one could blame us. But what if this chapter actually has less to do with fear and more to do with hope. What if these verses are less concerned with the seemingly insurmountable odds and more concerned with true and blessed opportunity? What if Jesus was actually focusing less on what it takes to be a disciple and more on what it actually means to be a disciple? Because in my mind, that changes things. Yes, perhaps struggle, but also empowerment. Yes, maybe rejection, but also welcome. Yes, possibly division, but also the call to faithfulness. Yes, challenges, but also holy opportunity. Because a quick return to this morning's short reading reminds us that discipleship comes even in the form of just a cup of cold water offered for the sake of one of God's blessed and beloved. Something so unassuming, so ordinary, 
made beautifully sacred. Or to put it differently, discipleship doesn't have to be heroic. It can be, as Sarah Bessie puts it, that moment when we find ourselves outside with the misfits, the rebels, the dreamers, the second chance givers, the radical grace lavishers, the ones with arms wide open. That moment when we find ourselves courageously vulnerable. I love that. Because it means that discipleship can be a hand outstretched to help another over the divide. Discipleship can be a warm word spoken amidst the turmoil of conflict. Discipleship can be love extended when the world says hate. Discipleship can be radical acceptance, can be open-hearted welcome, can be a commitment to learn, can be a life touched by the embrace of grace. Discipleship can be as simple as a cold glass of water offered to parched and dry lips in search of a sip of hope. Because to be a disciple means to be courageously vulnerable and all for the sake of the gospel. I said at the beginning that one of my roles in the life of our synod is to work with congregations engaged in the work of mission. The ministries of these congregations are wonderfully varied, each of which represents a thread that is woven to form the beautiful tapestry of mission ministry across our whole church. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're not always really good at telling our mission stories. And yet these stories provide us with a great example of what it means to be a disciple. They are evidence that we truly are living as a courageously vulnerable church. Where food is made available to hungry bellies and where people are welcomed into intentional community, where love is offered, where steps are taken to bring awareness, where reconciliation is embodied where joy is shared. This, to me, is discipleship. And it's absolutely beautiful. A few weeks ago, I spent a weekend touring around New York City. It's been a bucket list item for me as long as I can remember, and a sale on flights made it irresistible. Of course, there are many visuals that stand out to me from those four days in New York, but perhaps one of the most lingering came as I was headed towards the subway at West 34th and 8th Avenue. As I approached, I could hear singing, which I quickly recognized as hymns. This group ran through some of the old favorites like What a Friend We Have in Jesus and In the Garden and Softly and Tenderly. But as I ran past the well-intentioned group of choristers, I noticed that behind them, sitting on a pile of blankets that had been soaked through from the overnight rain, was a man, unsheltered, unfed, unknown, forgotten, hidden. Let me tell you, the sound of the hymns, the banner the singers held, the messaging it contained has long since faded into the deepest recesses of my mind, but I can't say the same for that man. I have thought and prayed about him so often, and it occurs to me that he, a man sitting on a pile of wet blankets, he is precisely the person into whose life God would choose to step. God sees him even when I could not calls him even when I didn't know he was there, loves him even when he was hidden from view. Because that's what God does. Because that's who God is. And God calls us to get up, to follow, and to do likewise. To be disciples. What does it mean to be disciples who are courageously vulnerable in your community? What does it mean to live out such a calling in God's world? And what does it mean as the Church of Christ in the year 2023 to offer even a cold cup of water to one of God's beloved? I suspect it looks less like hymns sung on street corners and more like walking hand in hand with those who were once hidden from view. 
less like brick and mortar, beautiful though it may be, and more like a reformed take on a long and beautiful story. Less like the way we've always done things and more like a new path onto which God is leading us. Less like yesterday and more like tomorrow. May we hear the Spirit's call which beckons us into a life of courageously vulnerable discipleship. And having heard that call, may we be bold to step into the days ahead, assured that we are loved, assured that we are called, and assured that we are accompanied by the one in whose name we serve. For this and for you, I say thanks be to God. And amen.